everybody, this is uh, Elias again from Smart Robots Review here at Sci-Fi Day at Discovery World. I am with Sandy and we have BB-8 here and it's really cool maker. Uh, Phil Carper. So Phil, who is uh, that young gentleman you're holding? Uh, this is my son Luke and he's, he's 90% of the reason I wanted to build one because I wanted to be like, we found out we were having a boy and I'm like, I'm, I want to build him a droid. And my wife was like, why? This is going to suck up your whole life. <laughs> it did. Well, he is um, he's appropriately named. I love the name. Luke. Hi, Luke. Any comments? <laughs> okay. You want to hold, hold the mic? All right. <laughs> Obviously, uh, BB-8 here is uh, unique. Uh, he is the star of the show today, I think. Everybody wants to take pictures with him. So tell us a little bit about it, how you got started. Um, about his abilities and um, your journey in getting it built. Um, well, about two years ago, um, my wife and I started making a BB-8 on a whim. We were like, oh, hey, let's, uh, let's do this thing we saw on YouTube. This kid made one out of like a paper mache ball and a plastic head or a styrofoam head. And uh, as we progressed, uh, we didn't actually finish the, the fiberglass one or the... What are you doing, buddy? The paper mache one, because really it was too heavy to roll, and, and I started wanting to make it more perfect. And I discovered uh, BB-8 builders on Facebook, and all those guys are super into this, just like I am. So, what are you doing? How long, how long did it take you to build them? Um, so this finished version here, I would say about a year, from start to finish, from all the printing and building the drive and everything. It looks very realistic. So, how'd you get started? Was there like a set of plans? Uh, how did you get started? A little bit of both. I started with my own random ideas and then um, started piecing together what I was seeing online and, and a lot of guys that have designed like the panels and um, like programming for the lighting and the drive system and all that stuff and just, I don't know, I kind of, I went one way then stopped halfway through, went another way almost finished, went a completely different way after that. I mean, it's been stop and start. It's a journey, and I'm sure you learn a lot from the process. So, um, what was step one? Step one was finding, let's see. Comments. From, comments, <laughs> comments. Yeah. I would say finding a space to do it in, because we have a small two-bedroom apartment, and uh, so I took a whole room and basically plasticed it all off. I'm sure it was popular with the wife. That was great. Well, actually, I, I hogged the room anyway because that's where all my studio stuff is. So I just, I, I multi-purpose room is what it became. So to, uh, what can BB-8 do? Uh, he can roll forward, backward. He can, his dome spin. Um, he talks, his PSI light blinks when he talks. All the sphere lights are working right now. Sometimes one of them cuts out here and there. I'm, I'm still working on that. Uh, he can spin in, in place and he can roll, he can turn, but I prefer just doing the spin on, on the spot because it's way, way easier. Sure. Uh, what, it, uh, what is the primary material? Is it wood or? PLA plastic. So it's all 3D printed. 3D printed! Oh, sweet. That was the other awesome thing my wife was super happy about me doing was buying a 3D printer. And then you kind of, yeah. <laughs> so then, um, so most 3D printers that normal people can buy print uh, like a 10 by 10 piece or 8 by 8. So how'd you do it? Um, I actually started off with a very small, uh, like 200 by 200 print bed that I had to print everything in quad quadrants. Um, and I ended up buying a bigger one and it can print like the whole triangle, whole circle panel, the, the whole dome piece plus a lot of these are separate parts, but they all I could do them all at once, which makes less finish work for me. And, I, and then I know it's going to fit together because it's all one piece. <laughs> so what's uh, what's the rated speed on this guy? I haven't tested that out yet. I'm afraid to right right now. I don't want. Well, to yeah. Uh, what about uh, battery life? How long does it go for? What? I will say this: I turned him on when we got here about like 9:20 a.m. and I don't know what time it is now, but. He's been he's been going the whole time without dying. So, nice. <laughs> um, so compared to other BB-8 builders, um, is there anything special about this guy that sets him apart? Um, you know, it's I'm not sure. Uh, a lot of guys like the drive system that we're using carries V1 drive that's in there. Um, a lot of guys do different types of weight. They do different. They even do different uh, dome setups. For example, I don't know if you can. 
see this here. This is called the halo head mech. It's all on the outer edge of the skirt ring as opposed to a lot of the mounts that have it all under the center here. Okay. Um, so and this, like magnets? yeah, okay. and they're opposite polarity. So they're the opposite of what's in here too. So this way it's pushing it into itself instead of trying to drag onto the next magnet if the head turns. So it keeps it from spinning in place without actually going anywhere. So is he a finished product or do you have like any improvements you want to make to him? <laughs> I'm literally always wanting to do something better to him. Um, but I mean, as far as him being presentable, I think he's, he's finally up to my standards of, of uh, droid. I think no. you said you finished painting him last I, night. Yeah, I actually, he was, he had been, painting had been done for about a couple of weeks and then um, I was, actually got messaged to bring BB-8 here because I commented on a something post from the 501 Wisconsin Garrison or 501st Garrison and I was like, hey, I wonder if they have a BB-8 and she messaged me and said, hey, we don't. Um, come over to this thing that we're doing and I'm like, all right, well now he needs to look better. So I took took just kind of wiped off the weathering that I had done and re basically redid it all last night till like one in the morning. No, he's incredible. I love the LEDs. Sure. Uh, very realistic. Um, how do you service them if you need to get inside the big uh, sphere? So what, what I have to do is I normally take off two triangle panels and then you can unscrew the panels for one of the circles. Usually the easiest one to take off is this one here because it only has one section of lights as opposed to like two different areas. So I, and I have servo connectors on either end. So I, I just basically unplug it there. So if I take two triangles off, I can lift this one out of the grooves of the other two triangles. And you know, so three panels have to come off in order for me to even get in there. <laughs> so is this gonna be the final droid or are you gonna work on something new? Uh, like an, an, another droid? Oh yeah, no, I've got, I'm looking at 18 R2-D2s right now. I, I have to at some point, and I would like to build DO, which is that new one that's going to be in the Rise of Skywalker. And that one looks like a nightmare too, because all the counterbalancing and stuff for that. Well, um, I don't want to take you away from your son any longer. Luke, you have been a star today, thank you very much. Um, I love you, BB-8. I think um, you've done a fantastic job. Uh, he's flawless. So, um, and Jedi's are coming to see BB-8. So, um, outstanding. So, Phil, if anybody wants more information about your your adventures in droid building, how do they follow you? I just I just put it on my Instagram mostly. Um, ATW underscore Phil. Okay, so for more information about Phil's uh, awesome droid and um, his new adventures uh, with any new droids, uh, go on to Instagram and check him out. Thank you so much for your time. And Phil and Luke, that's your daddy, by the way. Do you know who your father is, right? He doesn't yet. <laughs> I'm keeping that for a surprise when he's older. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate it. Good luck today.